ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ಹೇ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ನಾರಾಯಣಂ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ್ಯ ನರಂ ಚೈವ ನರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವೀಂ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸಂ ತಥೋ ಜೈ ಮುದೀರೇತ್ ಅಷ್ಟ ಪ್ರಾಯ ಶುಭದ್ರೇಶು ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಭಾಗವತ ಸೇವೆಯ ಭಗವತಿ ಋತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ ಭಗವತಿ ನೈಷ್ಠಿಕಿ ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನತಿಮಿರಾಂಧಸ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನ ಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮಿಲಿತ ಮೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಮೇನ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪಕಾಮಯ್ಯ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿಕ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀಗುರು ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ಪರಗಮನ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ ಸಾಗನ ರಘುನಾಥಾನ್ವಿತ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದಾನ್ ಸಾಗನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾ ಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತುತೆ ಸಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನುಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಾಮಿ ಹರಿಪ್ರಿಯೆ ಪಾಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತೃಪ್ಯಶ್ಚ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯೋ ಚ ಪಿತಾನ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾದರ್ಶಿ ಮಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಓಕೆ ಒನ್ ನೈನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ದಾನ ಧರ್ಮಾನ್ ರಾಜ ಧರ್ಮಾನ್ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಧರ್ಮಾನ್ ವಿಭಾಗಶಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಧರ್ಮಾನ್ ಭಗವದ್ ಧರ್ಮಾನ್ ಸಮಾಸ ವ್ಯಾಸ ಯೋಗತಃ he then explained by divisions acts of charity dana dharman uh, raja dharman pragmatic activities of a king moksha dharman activities for salvation uh, and then tri dharman duties of women bhagavat dharman acts of devotees and devotees samasa uh, generally vyasa explicitly both briefly and extensively <clears throat> okay to give charity is one of the householders main functions where are all, where are all our householders uh, our householders are not here to hear uh, <clears throat> are we recording yeah. to give charity is one of the householders main functions and he should be prepared to give in charity at least 50% of his hard earned money 50% may not be possible for everybody but we have to start somewhere and we have to progressively increase agrasta uh, brahmachari or student should perform sacrifices a householder should give charity and a person in the retired life or in renounced order should practice penances and austerities hmm. so retired life or in renounced order which is vanaprastha or sanyas one has to practice penances and austerities grahastha one has to give charity one can live a comfortable life but one has to give charity the father the spiritual master and the king are not to become irresponsible in the matter of leading their subjects to the path of ultimate liberation from birth death old age disease one should not become irresponsible in this matter most parents are responsible in making sure that their children remain in the bondage of birth death old age disease like they make sure that they have taken full responsibility for that Shastra mm. says that we have to be we have to be responsible to liberate them from birth death old age disease not get them stuck further mm. <clears throat> so this is also very important as parents we should mm. we should learn this that how how do we help our children uh, to so that it will this will be their last material birth actually qualified brahmanas are meant to give direction to the kings for proper administration in terms of scriptures like manu samhita dharma shastras of parashara a typical king is the ideal of people in general he should be ideal person and if the king is pious religious chivalrous and munificent uh, pious religious chivalrous meaning willing to help others munificent mm-hmm. very uh, broad minded citizens generally follow him such a king is not a lazy sensuous person living at the cost of the subjects but alert always to kill thieves and dacoits 
the pious kings were not merciful to dacoits and thieves in the name of nonsensical ahimsa the thieves and dacoits were punished in an exemplary way so that in the future no one would dare commit such nuisances in an organized form such thieves and dacoits were never meant for administration as they are now and so typical king should get um guidance from a qualified brahmana based on manu samhita dharma shastra parashara etc and he should be the he should be the ideal person ideal person must be the king the tax taxation law was simple there was no force no encroachment the king had a right to take one fourth of the production made by the subject no questions asked the king had a right to claim a fourth of one's allotted wealth one would never grudge parting with it because due to the pious king and religious harmony there was enough natural wealth namely grains fruits flowers silk cotton milk jewels minerals etc and therefore no one was materially unhappy 25% taxation was still okay uh, now it's more than that <clears throat> the king had to see that the reserve energy of humanity was properly utilized human energy is meant not exactly for fully fulfilling animal propensities but for self realization so the king had to see to this that everybody is engaged in trying to fulfill and the goal of human life and not for sense self sense gratification the whole government was especially designed to fulfill this particular purpose as such the king had to select properly the cabinet ministers but not on the strength of voting background the ministers the military commanders and even the ordinary soldiers were all selected by personal qualification and the king had to supervise them properly before they were appointed to their respective posts the king was especially vigilant to see that all the tapasvis or persons who sacrificed everything for disseminating spiritual knowledge were never disregarded the king knew well that the supreme person of god and never tolerates any insult to his unalloyed devotees such tapasvis were trusted leaders even of the rogues and thieves even rogues and thieves used to take guidance from tapasvis who would never disobey the orders of tapasvis the king would give special protection to illiterate helpless and widows of the state so here propad is giving all this you know the raja dharma <coughs> is not talk much about stri dharma here so for those who want to hear more about stri dharma please read book mm, mothers and masters by his original bhakti vikas maharaj so you will understand in detail about stri dharma but uh, here in this verse in bishma they have talked about so many things he also talked about bhagavad dharma what are the how a devotee should behave and that also there is an upcoming book vaishnava culture etiquette and behavior by maharaj so whenever it comes it will be a very good uh, you know guide for all of us to get okay so this is very very important uh, please note this to get freedom from anger one should learn how to forgive so if one wants to give up anger uh, i am first in the list i want to give up anger <coughs> you learn to forgive okay somebody did something you say it's okay learn to forgive to be free from unlawful desires one should not make plans so this is very very powerful uh, this statement for example suppose say you have 5 minutes time huh? suddenly we have some desire in our head we will start making plans so if you stop making plans if there is some unlawful desire in the head don't try to make plan for that don't try to make a plan to fulfill it automatically that unlawful desire will take a back seat because it's not lawful mm-hmm. by spiritual culture one is able to conquer sleep spiritual culture which means what waking up at such a certain time sleep, sleeping at an appropriate time by just that culture one can conquer sleep because sleep is just laziness so we can conquer by tolerance only one can conquer desires and avarice tolerate so if there is so much of some urge to do something just tolerate and we can conquer the desire disturbance from various de- diseases can be regulated by reg- can be avoided by regulated diets uh, big one by self control one can be free from false hopes money can be saved by avoiding undesirable association by practice of yoga one can control hunger and worldliness can be avoided by culturing the knowledge of impermanence so what does this mean 
worldliness meaning getting attached to this world can be avoided by culturing knowledge of impermanence seeing that everything here is impermanent everything is temporary so then why do i have to get attached to this world so this worldliness can be given up dizziness can be conquered by raising up you suppose if we are dizzy we should raise up we should not put our head down false arguments can be conquered by factual ascertainment talkativeness can be avoided by gravity if somebody has this problem of talking too much by gravity and silence prowess by prowess one can avoid fearfulness prowess is one and materially and then surrender to krishna perfect knowledge can be obtained by self cultivation self cultivation means not by our like cultivation of atma one must be free from lust avarice anger dreaming etc to actually attain the path of salvation hmm? lust kama krodha lobha moha madha matsarya okay as far as women class are concerned they are accepted as power of inspiration for men as such women are more powerful than men mighty julius caesar was controlled by cleopatra such powerful women are controlled by shyness therefore shyness is important for women once this control valve called shyness is loosened women can create havoc in society by adultery adultery means production of unwanted children known as varna sankara who disturb the world so propa is saying shyness is very very important it is the control valve and the shyness is not just in the way one interacts uh um, daily interacts with people but it's the way she dresses is the way she comes about it's the way she communicates is the way she walks it's the way she talks it's the way she eats everything about her lady now uh, there has to be shyness and actually this whole thing you know people are just not conscious at all you know sometimes i feel like how people cannot be so conscious about how they what they dress how they dress how it is seen by other people and women have to be extra careful about it uh unfortunate but this is required fortunate because men can wear anything and nobody cares and in fact i keep i i, I mean uh, uh men the way they dress nobody really it's so much bothers right but if women wear dress in a non traditional way it's immediately a focus of attention everybody sees even women will see and it becomes fashion so we have to be very very careful we have to really you know be very introspective about these things and i mean this shyness is such an important thing it cannot be overstressed so some of the aspects that propas is discussing in this purport uh, of course i mean like i said you know these purports are long and very very powerful so everybody should read these purports long purports 28 dharma ta kama mokshamscha sahopayan yatha mune nana khyane tihaseshu varnayam asa tatvavit then he described the occupational duties of different orders and statuses of life citing instances from history for he was himself well acquainted with the truth so he was explaining everything to maharaj yudhishthir with examples from history dharmam pravada tastasya sakala pratyupastitah yo yoginas chand chandamrityor vanchitas tu tarayanah while bhishma deva was describing occupational duties the sun courts ran into the uttarayana northern hemisphere this period is desired by mystics who die at their will currently this is uttarayana the period that we are in is uttarayana uh, so this period is desired by mystics who dis- die at their will of course in bhagavad gita krishna talks about all this uttarayana dakshinayana uh, the time of giving up body one goes to swarga one doesn't come back and then says for a devotee doesn't have to bother all this arjuna don't worry uh, just devotee can die at any point of time and krishna will take care of taking him back to god mm. uh, so devotee has doesn't have to worry but 
Bhishma Dev was also mystic because he had a yogi. He had the power of giving up his body at the right time. So he was waiting for the right moment. And then this opportune moment came. So now, very beautiful. I mean, this is the most important thing, especially for Grastas. Tado pasamhritya giras sahasranai sahasranir vimukta sangam mana adi purushe krishne lasat pita pate chatur buje purastite milita drigvyadharayat Thereupon, that man who spoke on different subjects with thousands of meanings and who fought on thousands of battlefields and protected thousands of men, stopped speaking. And being completely freed from all bondage, withdrew his mind from everything else and fixed his wide open eyes upon the original person of God, Sri Krishna, who stood before him, four-handed, dressed in yellow garments that glittered and shined. Hmm. person who spoke on different subjects with thousands of meanings. He withdrew his mind from everything. He stopped speaking first. And he withdrew his mind from everything else and fixed his wide open eyes upon Krishna who was standing there in front of him. Vishwande was so fortunate that Krishna was standing there. And Krishna's Krishna's beauty, Krishna is so attractive that it is inevitable that anybody will just look at him and achieve perfection. Right? We might not be so fortunate. So what we need to do, while we are in Grastha, we can speak on various subjects, useful, useless, everything. Right? But at the time of Vanaprastha, we should stop speaking. If you don't practice at the time of Vanaprastha, then we will not be able to do this at the time of death. Mm, so stop speaking on useless things, enter Vanaprastha, completely free from all material bondage, withdraw mind from everything else and fix it on Krishna. Very, very important. <clears throat> I mean, he was such an expert, he could do that at the last moment, but we might not be able to do that. If one is absorbed in thoughts of Supreme Lord Krishna, if you to go back home without any doubt, this is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. Mm, so that is what he's doing. Is fixing his mind. And here, Prabhupada in the purport, he's quoting verses from 8.5 to 8.15. Mm, where, you know, the time of death, one quits his body, thinking my nature will attain my nature. So all those verses which are talking about uh, how one should think about Krishna at the time of death. Otherwise, whatever thoughts come in our mind accordingly, we'll get a new body. So Prabhupada has quoted all those 15 verses here. And saying Bhishma, they were so fortunate that Krishna is standing right in front of him. He was the object of his attraction, attention, and he was personally present. And so he therefore, he fixes his open eyes, wide open eyes. Mm. Wide open eyes. Wide open means like so eager to look at the Lord. Uh, wide open eyes, not that it's just big eyes. Mm. He's so eager to look at the Lord who is standing right in front of him in the form that he wanted to see. Uh, Chaturbhuja, Parthasarthi form that Bhishma, they wanted to see. Krishna is you know, showing that form. So Bhishma Dev is like full attention is looking at the Lord. So this is this is the very important, this different subjects. Also, as we grow in Krishna consciousness, we should reduce this speaking. Unnecessary things, unnecessary subjects. Yes, you know, many times we are in the association of devotees, we don't talk unnecessary things. But when you are in the association of non-devotees, you know, office people, some relatives, etc. etc., generally we are speaking. You know, because if you don't speak, then we will find it difficult to manage. So we will speak some useless stuff. Yeah, we can do like Raghunath Das Goswami, externally speak, but internally not get affected by those. But very difficult. Many times we discuss things and then, you know, we carry those thoughts along with us home. And then we are thinking about that. It may not be really Krishna conscious thoughts. So it's very important. <clears throat> That slowly and steadily we should reduce this getting ourselves involved too much in material life. We should just do only as much as required. And all this is for whom who wants to achieve perfection in this life. You know, if you don't want to achieve perfection in this life, then we can live however we want. It doesn't matter. Right? But what Prabhupada's purports? Prabhupada's purports are all meant for achieving perfection in one life. 
so we have to decide whether we want that achieving perfection in one life or we are okay we we are okay to come back again mm. then we can take it easy but otherwise we have to do this military discipline propat says in bhagavad gita mm. uh, especially for agrastha all this is like military discipline so difficult but we have to follow no other option <coughs> विशुद्धया धारणया हता शुभस तदीक्ष ईक्ष यु गुदश्रम निवृत्त सर्वेन्द्रिय वृत्ति विभ्रमस तुष्टावजन्यम विसृजा जनादनम बै प्यूर् मेडिटेशन लुकिंग एट लॉर्ड कृष्ण यट वन वॉज फ्रीड फ्रॉम ऑल मेटीरियल इन आस्पीशियनेस एंड वॉज रिलीड ऑफ ऑल बॉडीली प्लेन पेन्स काज बै द अरउंड Thus, all the external activities of his senses at once stop, and he prays transcendently to the control of the living beings while quitting his material body. Hmm. Once freed from all material inauspiciousness, by just coming in touch with Krishna, all material inauspiciousness is destroyed. And we can forget all our bodily pains, and if our minds can become absorbed in Krishna, all his external activities of senses stop. and internal activity was and just to now he's going to offer transcendental play, prayers for a pure devotee of the lord like bhishma deva the illusion was at once removed as soon as the lord arrived now krishna is like the sun and the illusory external material energy is like darkness in the presence of the sun there is no possibility that darkness can stand therefore just on the arrival of lord krishna all material contamination was completely removed and bishman they was able to transcendently be situated by stopping the activities of the impure senses in collaboration with matter the soul is originally pure and so also the senses by material contamination the senses assume the role of imperfection and impurity by revival of contact with the supreme pure lord krishna the senses again become freed from material contaminations bishman they attained all these transcendental conditions prior to his living leaving the material body because of the lord's presence so lord is uh, you know is directly present in front of bishma dev lord can also be present by his name so that is why propad has teaching us to chant hare krishna all the time hmm. So and see this Bhishma Dev's life, life of Narada Muni. We should observe. We should study deeply because both of these are important. Narada Muni because how he achieved perfection in one life, and Bhishma Dev strength of his consciousness, you know, so beautiful. Now he's going to offer prayers, which, as you know, proper in a person in the best of health condition, will not be able to offer. This shows that he has transcended his uh, bodily situation completely. I mean, amazing prayer. So that we will not do today. So we will just do one more verse and we'll stop because those prayers we will do. It require it will require yeah more than one hour. So we can't go there. But we'll just do one more verse and stop for today. Um. Well, actually, the prayer start from here only. Hmm. Okay, so just this one verse we will do. Bishma Dev is here. Okay, the Bishma Uvacha. Iti mati rupaka upakal pita vitrishna bhagavati sattvata punga bevi bhumi vasukam upagate kochit bihar tum prakriti mupe yushi yad bhava bha prava ha ha. Bishma Dev said, "Let me now invest my thinking, feeling, and willing, which means activities of the mind." which were so long engaged in different subjects and occupational duties in the all powerful lord shri krishna so the mind is engaged in various topics of occupational duties etc uh, in thinking feeling willing but now he investing all of that in the all powerful lord shri krishna he is always self satisfied but sometimes being the leader of the devotees he enjoys transcendental pleasure by descending to the material world although from him only the material world is created so first he is first saying that he is going to you know now all his thinking feeling willing will be in relation to krishna and first glorification is glorifying krishna's position that is self satisfied 
but sometimes he becomes leader of devotees. So the first thing Bhishma Dev is talking is uh, recognizing Krishna's relationship with his devotees. Mm. How he is self-satisfied, but sometimes because he is the, being the leader of devotees, he enjoys transcendental pleasure by descending to the material world. So why does the Lord come here? Because he enjoys transcendental pleasure by being with his devotees. Uh, so though he is only the creator of this material world, it, it comes down here and just to enjoy transcendental pleasure in relation with his devotees. Uh, so this itself we can understand how exalted Bhishma Dev's bhakti is because he is directly uh, recognizing the Lord in relationship with devotees. And Krishna's uh, whole existence, I mean, he only enjoys when he is in the association of devotees. Otherwise, he just doesn't enjoy. That's the reason he created us in the first place. And we became, uh, you know, uh, kind of, we went against him, right, in some sense. We want to enjoy independent of Krishna. But our creation was itself for his transcendental pleasure. So Krishna is very happy. And that's the reason he descends to this material world. He wants to show his devotees, you know, the path of Raga Bhakti and attract them. So that, you know, we can all go back to him. Uh, <clears throat> to achieve pure devotion service, thinking and feeling and willing must be invested in Krishna. Cannot be invested in other things. That means mind cannot be engaged in other activities. Right? That we should understand. Unless one is purified from all sorts of material desires, the da Lord does not become one's leader. And leader of devotees, Vishwandev is saying, and Prabhupada is saying, when does the Lord become the leader of the devotees? When the devotee is purified from all sorts of material desires. Material responsibilities are okay, but not material desires. For the ordinary man who wants to lord it over material nature, Lord only sanctions and becomes a witness, Paramatma. Paramatma, he only anumanta upadrashta, he yeah, sanctions and becomes a witness. But he never gives the non-devotee instructions for going back to God. So this is the difference in the way uh, Paramatma deals with devotees and non-devotees. For non-devotees, he will not give any instruction. He will just be Anumanta Upadrishta. He is sanctioning, he is the witness. Okay, you want this to do to be done? Okay, do it. I am witnessing your activity. Now that results in Karma Phala and this is what you are doing. That's all. He doesn't give any instruction. But for devotees, he gives instruction. Tatami Buddhi Yogam Tam so we should we should let Lord become our leader hmm, by purifying ourselves from all sorts of material desires. Of course, the, how does the Lord become our leader? By sending his representative, the Guru. So Guru has to become our leader, so which means that we have to surrender to Guru, we have to take his uh, instructions, we have to follow his orders, mm, then automatically that indic that is an indication that Lord has become our leader. Mm, and and this is only for people who have purified purified from all sorts of material desires. Okay, so we'll stop here. Um, we'll meet next Sunday, Krishna willing, and very beautiful prayers of Bhishma Dev. So we will discuss, we'll see how much we can do. Uh, this Monday evening, I don't know, is a very easy fee. Many people can't join. And then I don't know, they're not going to get uh, continuity, right? Unless they hear the recording. Anyway, okay. Okay, any questions? Anybody? Okay. I think, you know, after a long day of work, most people are tired to ask questions. Okay, okay. So we'll meet. Next Sunday, Krishna will be Ancha Kalpatra Pishta Kripa Sindhu Beya Chapatitana Bhavane Beya Vaishnu Beya Vyana Molnama Ananta Koti Vaishnu Vrinda Ki Deja Jagat Kuru Shila Prabhupada Kuti Hare Krishna Thank you Prabhupada Hare Krishna